Hey there, this is Vinny Moore, and if you're not listening to this show, then you're not hearing me right now, are you? (laughs) Hello again, everyone. This is Ryan Whitting, and you're listening to another episode of Rocking You All Night, where we talk all things rock, all things metal, and all things with strings. And if you don't like it, then you must not rock. My guest this week is the maestro of guitar mastery, Vinnie Moore, and we're coming to you from BLK Live in Scottsdale. So sit back, pull tight, and get ready for rocking you all night. Head over to axehandler.com, lean your guitar anywhere, and carry your guitar support stand everywhere with the Axe Handler. The Axe Handler is the premier American-made portable guitar stand in the world today. Head over to axehandler.com so you can make sure that your guitars never go slip sliding away again. That's axe-handler.com. Head over to phoenixanddragon.us for all of your Phoenix and Dragon band needs. Keep up to date on the future of progressive symphonic heavy metal with Phoenix and Dragon's concert dates, interviews, videos, and MP3 downloads at phoenixanddragon.us. Be sure to download Phoenix and Dragon's latest single, The Four Fires, as heard on the Rockin' You All Night podcast on SoundCloud. Get t-shirts, band merch, and metal so heavy that it hurts at phoenixanddragon.us. You're listening to the two-time, two-time bench press champion, the trendsetter, the friend-getter, the lyrical miracle, the poet who can smoke and joe it, the man who loves to chat about this or that, the host of Rockin' You All Night and Reacts Radio, Ryan Whitting. We are currently looking for advertisers and sponsors to keep our internet radio show and podcast free for our listeners. So if you have a product, a band or a brand that you'd love to have hyped, contact me today so that I can play it, fillet it, saute it, and you better believe that I'll slay it. And if you want, I'll rhyme it, chime it, jingle it, Chris Kringle it, and I'll even hit single it. Don't hesitate to throw some numbers my way and be a part of the funnest podcast in the nation today by messaging me at Rocking You All Night on SoundCloud and Instagram. Hi everybody, this is Ryan Whitting, the host of Rocking You All Night and Reacts Radio. People have said to me, Ryan, what's causing all this shaving and misbehaving? And I tell them, it's all about the Dollar Shave Club. With the Dollar Shave Club, you can get started with a month's worth of the best six blade razors and a handle for as low as $1. Or try one of the starter packs for as low as $5. Now those are some prices that you can't beat for some blades that'll keep you looking neat. All you have to do is look at my bio on the Rockin' You All Night podcast on SoundCloud and hit my Dollar Shave Club link so that you can keep your jawline looking lean, mean, and clean like mine. All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me one of the all-time great guitarists, a true legend, a legend in his own time, a legend in my mind, the great Vinnie Moore. A legend Vin- in my own mind, too. <laughs> well, I, some people would just say you're a legend, but yeah, dude, thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you here, Vinnie. Thanks, man. Great to be here. We are at beautiful BLK Live in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. I brought my beach towel and my beach body. Vinnie, are we, go- are we gonna go in the pool after the show? Maybe. If there's some girls in bikinis, I think I could be coerced pretty easily. I can make a few calls. Okay, sounds good, man. I know it is so freaking hot, man. This here. is actually unbelievable. A, a cool day for us, but... Uh, I'm functioning at 50%. <laughs> I bet your 50% is better than that 99% of everyone else. Well, maybe. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw you, you were with uh, UFO. It was a couple of years ago, and Shreddy Teddy, the producer here, his band, Phoenix and Dragon, opened... Uh, open that show and you guys just tore it up you're not with ufo right now you're doing solo tour and you're here with gus g and richie kotzen is here tonight 
What do you have going uh, in terms of this tour? Where are you going from here? Um, we're going to Vegas next, and then we're hitting California, going as far up as Seattle and Portland, and then basically a bunch of shows in California. We've already done four in Texas. Then I'm home for a month, and then over to Europe. I have some more solo shows. What are you playing in Europe? Are you doing festivals? or No, it's going to be a club tour all of November, starting in Budapest, I believe, and I can't even remember where it ends. Yeah. Are the women in Budapest the most beautiful on earth? You know, I don't think I've ever, ever played there before, to be really? honest with you. No. Oh, no kidding. I don't know why. Who are you with? Um, is, it, is it just you solo, or do you, or you have bands with you? Yeah, you that's going to be me as a solo artist for that one. No opening acts? Gus is I believe there's a local opening act, but no, it's not, it's not with Gus. Okay. Are you supporting, or have any albums coming out that you're supporting for that? I ha have a new record that I'm working on. It's almost finished, but it, you know, isn't, isn't quite ready yet, so... Before the new year we get to hear it, or after the new year? Probably just after. I was okay. hoping it would be out by now, but, you know, get in the studio, you know what happens. You get obsessive and take forever to do things. Is it, do you have the perfectionist mind? Is that what holds Totally. It? Really? Yeah, it drives me crazy, yeah, absolutely crazy. How do you overcome that, then? Do you need a producer to say we no, have a deadline? No, I like to work alone, but, you know, you just... Sometimes things happen like immediately and then sometimes you labor over things because you're being too picky and just kind of have to get better at knowing when you're, you know, just tormenting yourself basically and it's not getting any better. What's the minutia that you run into? Like if there's one thing specifically on this album that was like, I have to have a deadline and be done with it. Like what's one thing that drove you crazy? Well, you just start to hear things under a microscope bas basically when you really get into it. And you got to learn to like step back a little bit and not listen so closely because you kind of hear things that you won't even hear like a week later. I'll hear something myself that I, a week later I won't even notice. So, you know, it's just kind of getting crazy. Is it going to be, are you doing um, like with uh, other bands, they have, of course, digital release, CD release, but then they have all these like special editions, vinyls. Are you doing stuff like that with the upcoming album? Not on this one. I started my own label and I released the Aerial Visions record about uh, three, four years ago. And this new record's also going to be on my own label. And I've just been releasing digital and uh, CDs. Awesome. So no you, vinyl yet. None. Is there a reason for that? Just. Um, you know, I don't know. It gets kind of pricey to make them, and I don't know if the market is that big for it yet for me. What brought vinyl back? I just It's one of the things that I just, of the last few years, people are into vinyl, and but they're not even playing them. Maybe nostalgia, you know, looking back at the good old days, and also for the audiophiles who like the sound better. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Vinyl is... Analog, it's warmer than, you know, digital. Okay, do you prefer recording in analog then? No, I mean, back in the day there was two-inch tape and that was analog. And, you know, a lot of people will argue that that sounds a lot better and maybe it does sound a little better. But by the time you have a finished product, I don't think anybody really notices anyway. And, you know, it was a lot, it's a lot easier to record in a compu on a computer than it was two-inch tape. Okay. You just it's have way more flexibility nowadays. You have just a, a wealth of knowledge that I'm just, uh, I would love to just pick your brain for like two hours. You just all, <laughs> not just, you know, playability, but career wise and all that. You just have such a wealth of knowledge. Thank you for sharing all of that. Like that's some of this stuff is invaluable to the people that are aspiring, younger aspiring musicians. So thank mm -hmm. you for all that. Thank you. If you could take me back in time just a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, one or two years, one or two two decades maybe huh. when Vinny when Vinny was just a young kid before like you had made it like the just a young kid elementary school middle school at what point does Vinny Moore decide I'm playing guitar I'm making a living at playing guitar and what what was the reason for I that? started when I was 13 I started playing at 13 and I knew like by the time I was 15 that this is what I would love to do forever you know be a rock guitar guy who wrote songs and played in a band and toured and made a career out of it I knew that it was nearly impossible especially where I grew up on the east coast in Delaware a small town and uh, but it was my dream it's what I wanted to do and uh, luckily things worked out and I've been able to do it for many many years now 
so if you were to pinpoint like what what motivated you what inspired you were there uh, teachers parents was there a certain album something you saw you know i grew up into rock music and it was the beatles zeppelin deep purple and queen and uh i got my first guitar for christmas when i was like 12 and basically just because i saw the picture of a guitar in a catalog a penny's catalog and i thought hey that looks pretty cool i want that no kidding and uh, that was my motivation at the time and i got it for christmas and really didn't bother with it a whole lot and then i started taking lessons like the next year and started to really get obsessed with it who and taught Vinny Moore? Who gave you lessons? I we don't have to mention the name, but is it a... It was her name. The first teacher was Mary Biddle, and I studied for a year with her, just some basic lessons at the local music shop. After about a year, I had advanced, and she referred me to another guy named Nick Bucci, who was a great player in my local area, and uh, he was studying jazz guitar with Pat Martino, and he was also a rock guy, and he just taught me a lot of stuff, you know theory and you know exercises all different kinds of stuff to make me become a better player and musician one of the bands that you met well all the bands you mentioned of course are some of the all-time greats one of which i would love to know your thoughts on a couple of the different guitar players you mentioned deep purple richie blackmore needs no introduction is he to this day kind of underrated in terms of where he should be. Oh, I be. loved him. And no, I think he's always been huge. I don't think he's really underrated. I think he's gotten a lot of credit. Okay. Um, he was one of my main heroes. Um, when I was a kid and I found out I have the same birthday as him, no I like, totally freaked out. Like, wow, I have the same birthday as Richie. And uh, yeah, he was one of my very first guitar heroes. Just love the dude. That's, he's, there's two guys that I put at the top. It's Uli John Roth and Richie Blackmore, and they're kind of related. When Richie formed Rainbow and they got Tommy Bolin, if you can take yourself back then, the stuff that Tommy Bolin did with Deep Purple is kind of like largely unnoticed, but when you're talking like you, the teacher that had like a jazz rock fusion, mm -hmm. Tommy was largely responsible for jazz rock fusion. I, and I hear a lot of that in your, in your work, kind of like the way Tommy played. I just... Uh, um, you know, he was, I think... I didn't know those Deep Purple records. It was a little before me. In fact, the Richie records were before me, too. I went back. It wasn't until years later that I discovered those records. Okay. My mom had Machine Head, and uh, that came out in 72. I didn't start playing guitar until, like, 78. Okay. So Van Halen 1 was just coming out mm -hmm. at that point. And so I went back and heard the Deep Purple records, but for whatever reason, I didn't hear those the records with uh, Tommy, although I do have the Billy Cobham Spectrum Love record. It. With um, all that you've done in your career, is there anything that you want to make sure that you've done, make sure that you want to make sure that you accomplish before you say, I'm going to take, take it easy and sit jump by the in beach. that pool. I am so ready. Right outside here. <laughs> Are there certain like venues that you haven't played or festivals you wanted to do? Um, um, just anywhere there's a lot of people sounds great okay. to me. You know, I got to play the Spectrum in Philadelphia twice, which was the uh, concert venue I went to when I was a kid. Who did you see there? Um, everybody. My first concert was there. It was Blue Worcester Colt with Richie Blackmore's Rainbow oh opening. Oh, my God. I saw tons of bands there. And then I played there when I was a member of Alice Cooper's band and also my band opening for Rush on the Roll the Bones tour. You did the Hey Stupid tour. Yes. Correct. I love that album. What's the, is it Hurricane Years that you play? Yeah, Hurricane Years and Dirty Dreams. Oh, Dirty Dreams, how are you going to do me? I think yeah, that's the way it goes. that I was love. cool. We didn't do that live. I wanted to, but... Why didn't, why didn't you, Alice? I don't know. He had lots of songs to choose from, obviously. Yeah. Too many songs for, you know, That touring band, night. Eric Singer, was with you. That was, oh my God, that was like... Like, it was like an all-star band at, at its best. Like that It's was, a lot of fun, that tour, yeah. Yeah, great album. That's one that I think kind of gets overlooked, and it's probably his best of the 80s and 90s, I would think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so phenomenal with that. Are there any more th collaborations with Alice or anybody else that's upcoming with you? No, nothing on the horizon. Um, just, you know, doing my solo record, and we're some UFO touring next year. Oh, you're going back with them? Yeah, we start in England in March, and we're supposed to do America later in the year. When you come back here, I'll be here. Yeah. And we'll have to do more. Hope we're here. You'll be, you'll be here. 
uh, you'll, you'll have to, everyone hits Phoenix to go to Los Angeles. So. Absolutely. Yeah. In the year 2525. In the year of 2525. That is, of course, if man is still alive. When the name Vinnie Moore comes up, how do you want to be remembered? Um, I don't really. I don't want anybody to really remember. Bullshit. No, I don't know. <laughs> really? Jeez, that's a long time in the future. I don't think anybody's going to be remembered at that point. Probably not. When people hear the name Vinnie Moore, what do you want them to say now? I want to say that's like a total cool rockin' dude that I want to hang out with, man. Fuck I love his yeah. music and his <laughs> guitar playing. Do you have any? Um, do you have your own brand of guitar or anything like that coming out? Yeah, I'm um, with Dean Guitars, and I have a signature model called the Vinman 2000. Okay. What's what's different about the look of that, the sound of that, than some of your previous? It's in the family of a Stratocaster, like it's basically a Super Strat, w w some custom tweaks that you know, the shape of the neck and the pickups and cutaway and you know, j different things that I contribute it to make it feel comfortable and sound good for me. Is it out, is it out now? Yeah. Yep. And they can get it from your website or Dean Guitars website. Dean Guitars. Okay. With um, with I know time being short, I usually play a signature segment called This or That. I just want to do two questions of this or that with you. Okay. Because I know time is short. So I just give you two things. You tell me this or that. Everyone's been stealing this segment from me, Vinny. I don't know why. Do people ever steal your work and it frustrates you? Or um. Without naming names. Has anybody stole my stuff and frustrated me? Not really. Okay. There are certain things I'm protective of, though. And when other play players ask me how I've done something, I... I and if it's something I don't want to share, I pretend like I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I don't know, man. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm a little stingy sometimes. You have to be, though, because it's like you don't want to give if away If it's something I feel is really, you know, unique that I came up with it. So tell me about this, Vinny. Hold on. i got to take a phone call. It's Vince McMahon. So, okay. Let me do two questions with you. Doctor, doctor, please. Or doctor, doctor, give me the news. Hmm. Wow. You can't I choose Dr. Pepper. That's not a response. I'd go with Robert Palmer because I'm, I've played Dr. Doctor so many times on stage that, you know, I need to hear something different. Really? Well, it's like, you know, you love Led Zeppelin and Skinner, but how many times can you hear Stairway to Heaven and Freebird? You know, I, when those come on the records now, I skip through those tracks because you just can't I'm hear the same them way. again. I want when the levee breaks, I want cashmere and the radio stations aren't playing it. Yep, he seems to play always the same couple songs by an artist. It's, isn't that odd? When I become a radio DJ in a national show, we're going to go deep on some tracks. There you go. That's what are the some way deep tracks you want of yours played on radio? Of my tracks? Um, deep tracks. Maybe The Journey from the first record, uh, As Time Slips By from the second, Deep Sea from the Meltdown record, and uh, from Aerial Visions, maybe A Strange Dream. Can we get all these songs um, online from your website or CDs? How do, how CDs, digitally, download, what, whatever, yeah. And fans should go available. where to get that? And any of your merchant information? Uh, Amazon, I don't know. Wherever you normally get your stuff. Okay, and vinnymore.com, we could get some stuff there. I don't really sell things from my website, but you can get information there okay, that's for free. Where, that's where we go. Last question, this or that. Ryan Whitting? Or home run hitting? Oh, man. It's a tough one. Well, you know, I'm a Phillies fan, so I'm going to have to go with homers for the Phillies. <laughs> but if it's home runs for somebody else, who are you going to choose? Home runs for somebody else? Let's say that it was the Atlanta Braves in the 93 playoffs against the Phillies. You'd have to choose Ryan Whitting in terms of... Okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Vinny, thank you for such an awesome interview. Thank you not only for this interview and your performance here tonight at BLK Live, but thank you, honestly, in, on behalf of all of your millions of fans all over the world, thank you for all the years of just putting out kick-ass, awesome, guitar-shred, phenomenal music. Thank you so much for all of that. And thank you for being on Rockin' You All Night, where we talk all things rock, all things metal, and all things with strings. And if you don't like it... You can fuck off now. <laughs> then you must not rock. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. There you have it. Another episode of Rocking You All Night. Be sure to follow Rocking You All Night 
on YouTube, Facebook, SoundCloud, and Instagram. The music on this episode is provided by Phoenix and Dragon. To download Phoenix and Dragon's songs, go to phoenixanddragon.us. Follow Vinnie Moore Guitarist on Instagram and go to vinniemore.com for all of your Vinnie Moore needs. And be sure to check out blkliveaz.com for all of your BLK Live concert calendar needs. We'll see you when the sun shines again. Until then, follow along, leave comments, click like and subscribe, and remember, we've only just begun.